Hi everyone! In today's episode, we shall look into yet another interesting topic in the chemical world, equilibrium. As we all know, chemical equilibrium is super fascinating. About 150 years ago, a super cool guy called Harry Louis Le Chatelier came up with the principles of equilibrium which we are still using today. Equilibrium is a pretty vast topic, but today, we will be looking at an amazing aspect of this topic, thermochromism, the equilibrium of colours. Before we jump right into thermochromism, let's look at something familiar first. When it's hot, we relieve our heat by sweating. When it's cold, we shiver so that the movement of our muscles can generate heat. These responses naturally happen in order to maintain our body at equilibrium conditions. And do you know that it is not only achieved by animals, but also some special smart materials? These materials are called thermochromic materials which we just mentioned. Thermo means heat and chromo means colour. They are heat sensitive smart materials that produce a myriad of colours at different temperatures. We will explore two main types of materials that are used to produce thermochromic effects in this video. Leucodyes and liquid crystals. So the first type of thermochromic smart materials are the leucodyes. As the name suggests, leuco means white or colourless and dyes are simply dyes. But remember that these are not just any kind of dyes, they are special dyes that are highly sensitive to temperature and heat changes around us. Leuco dyes are organic carbon-based chemicals, just like what you see here. They shift back and forth between two subtly different structures, also referred to as resonance. One of them is leuco, a colourless form, and the other is non-leuco, the coloured form. They absorb and reflect light differently. In simple terms, we say that this reaction is endothermic, so when heat is added to it, the forward reaction that takes up this heat is favoured more. Thus, more reactants are converted to products, shifting the position of equilibrium and producing a new colour. Since we have two kinds of molecules, we get two different colours of light. Leucodyes are generally inexpensive materials and are commonly used in less complicated items. One example is the colour changing box, where the card responds to the temperature of the liquid added. The next example is a battery. Wait, what? Batteries don't change colour. Or so you may think. Not many of us know this, but there are leucodyes at the side of the batteries. The test strip on the battery is black when cooled. By connecting the battery to a circuit, a current is generated, causing the thermochromic ink to heat to the temperature needed to become translucent. This reveals the design that is painted in normal ink. Cool, right? But wait up, don't be stunned just yet. The next type of materials are the liquid crystals. Liquid crystals are solids in some aspects and liquids in other aspects. The ones used in thermochromia are known as pneumatic, in which the molecules are arranged similar to meshes in a box, in layers and roughly pointing the same way. Shine some light on pneumatic liquid crystals and some of it will reflect back in a type of reflection known as iridescence. Incoming light waves reflect off nearby crystals and add together by a process called interference which produce the reflection. The colour of the reflected light depends in a very precise way on how closely the crystals are together. Heat up or cool down your pneumatic liquid crystals and you'll change the spacing between them, altering the amount of interference and changing the colour of the reflected light from black, through red and all the colours of the spectrum to violet and back to black again. Yes, yes, this spectrum of colours is amazing to the eye, but what are the applications of this? Well, they are used in mood rings. Mood rings were the thing in the 90s period, old school, you may think. But it is an emerging trend because of its innate chemistry concept. Your mood is correlated to your body temperature. When you're stressed or cold, blood is directed away from your skin and to your internal organs, which causes the liquid crystals in a mood ring to twist and turn a darker colour. On the other hand, when you're happy, your body temperature rises and the liquid crystals will twist in another direction causing the colour to change to the other end of the spectrum. Here are some examples of what mood ring colours mean. Black, mysterious, stressed, tense or angry, orange, unsettled, annoyed or exasperated, green, happy or amused, blue, very happy, peaceful, subdued, purple, moody or mischievous. Pink red, hopeful, fascinated, or awestruck. We've all learned about Le Chatelier's principle and how heat affects an equilibrium solution. When temperature increases, the endothermic reaction is favoured, and when temperature decreases, the exothermic reaction is favoured. But he was smarter than you think he is. He invented the principle not just for you to mark on, he invented it for you to have cool marks. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching today's episode and hope you all learned something amazing about the marvellous chem world. Remember to like, comment and share on this video. XOXO, Chem Cats.